Like when he had like the whole episode of I'm sneaking, I'm sneaking, but it was sneaking. just like like it was like one of the forge things just moving a box around so he could say <laughs> Yeah. That show has got like back back in the glory days of when you actually had to animate everything yourself. Alright. I think both teams are just about ready. They're getting into order. Probably one of the better classic shows in oh, it's, gamers. It's easily one of the best online shows. Either that or if Deus Ex Machina actually had a good ending, I would say that one would be up there too, but it, it like the guy like stopped making it for a while and then he just like came back to finish it and it was like garbage and I was like, Oh, that kinda sucks. Yeah. There really wasn't too many uh shows actually out of games other than that one i think it was big for a little bit but it was mostly like shorts if anything it was like what made i guess like video making on youtube huge because like everybody wanted to do stuff with games after seeing red vs blue and then it just became like animated shorts or montages you know i miss like the modern warfare 2 montages those are like the coolest thing ever yeah yeah my well, modern warfare 2 pretty much pioneered the entire youtube gaming scene there wasn't like yeah. a big scene for playing video games on youtube like let's plays and all that stuff kind of all stemmed from the Modern for two scene as well, far let's as i plays, remember let's plays kind of stemmed from minecraft like once minecraft got big then everybody was like let's play minecraft and it's all right it stupid. was <laughs> it was all like the call of duty people on machinima uh machinima uh, respawn i think it was called they all got yeah. bored and minecraft came out it's like let's play minecraft and then it's like just kind of exploded. I'm sure they like the idea existed, but it didn't like become big until that time, as far as I re recall. Yeah, which is pretty much how it did get big. But it was still kind of funny because there were a lot of funny stuff people did in Minecraft back then. Yeah, yeah. Leona gonna be the first ban for DOV. Not the choice I would have expected to see here. I think maybe you want to look at banning out the Elise or the Jin. And possibly they still go for that, but that there's just too many picks that are so strong for battle cast that you have to look at banning. Yeah, or even like the Cho'Gath. I mean, he was a like Doodle was a monster on Cho'Gath after like mid game. He was just killing people left and right, and they couldn't do an, any amount of damage to really get through him. So, but Fizz still being pretty standard from battle cast. Swain coming out. Swain is also another good band. Hey, but thanks for the one bit crisis. Hey, hey, Osquirtle showing crisis up 200 bits. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank God for somebody not just giving us one bit. You mean like crisis did two seconds ago? Yeah, yeah. Or like everybody else before that, like, mm, here's a bit. Yeah. Tom here's Kench one. also still banned. They really, really think that Faithful Fox is going to be the hard carry of this game. Uh, and I mean, Faithful's been doing well, but at no point have I felt like if Faithful was doing bad, that Battlecast wouldn't be able to win. Yeah. No, it was definitely more business or doodle. That pretty much carried that whole game. Well, this pick does make it a little bit more sensible because Urgot, if he does get someone hit with the ult, um, Tom Kent can actually eat them and save yeah. them. So maybe that does make sense, but it leaves open both the Elise, the Lissandra of Battlecast. Probably going to grab Jin next unless Soccer grabs it. And you just traded three power picks for one. Yeah. And while Urgot is very strong and Zog is very good on Urgot being possibly a mid Urgot, it's probably not going to save them in yeah. the two picks that they just picked. Yeah, it's hard to tell where it's going to go, but Soccer and Donnie going to be grabbing Zaya Rakan, the lovers duo, down in the bot lane. Hoping to pop off, get some good engage power, something they were kind of lacking in the last game, only really... Which, to be honest, I mean, despite Zyra Khan being, like, the lovers duo, like, at the same time, I, I almost feel like Zyra is better without Rakan. I, like, I don't think really 
we've seen too many both Saiyas and Rakans together doing well, at least in a way like where they're smashing. Not in our league. Really, only Amp can play that lane effectively, it feels. Um, but to be fair, also being one of Nizumi's best champions, right. that's probably why. Being the fact that Rakan is probably Nizumi's best champion, that makes sense. And yeah. Zaya is super easy to play, so... Yeah, but Battlecast did grab the Gnar for themselves. I would expect mm. to start seeing bands thrown at King B, the Kaiza, uh, hopefully the Jin next. But uh, we'll have to see. Well, they banned out the Kaiza. They banned Warwick, which I guess Rusty plays Warwick, but I never thought it was like a bannable champion. Yeah, it must be one of Rusty's better ones. Um, they're probably hoping to get him back onto something like the Sejuani, where he had actually a pretty good early game macro, but his mid to late game positioning and team fighting was not really up to par. So, but to be fair, also his whole team like really wasn't up to par, so it was kind of hard for him to really do much. That's fair. Because like when your whole team is like walk like. No offense to DOV, but like when you're just like walking in like one at a time and you and like yourself as a jungler, you're like, I guess I can't really do anything about this. <laughs> you just kind of have to let it happen. Yeah. Yeah, this is what I kind of want to see out of bands from teams against Battlecast more often. It's hitting King D's pool rather than um, Faithful's because King D will be perfectly happy playing the Jin, maybe the Kai'Sa, you know, just getting those really strong AD carries for himself. And he hasn't had a whole lot of time to show his other picks. So at this stage, I don't know if he can play them. I assume he can. But if I was a team, I would be trying to make King D play something else. Um, it happened a little bit he late into the draft. He but... quite a variety. I, want to, I know he plays Varus, and I know he plays... I want to say he played Caitlyn a couple times. Right. Outside that, though, I'm not sure what else he actually plays. It just hasn't of... been to the extent of something like the Jin, but holy tank yeah. Amoli coming out from a DOV right now. Yeah, there is a lot of tanks. And I mean, look at this lineup. I maybe almost would have wanted to King D to play Jin. I know I said earlier, ban the Jin, but if you're going to be fielding three tanks, but you might Tristana. want the Jin, but the Tristana. Gonna be coming in. Lots of late game power there. And now it's Doodle's turn to play the Nar. Yep. Nar. It's kind of interesting that they still went with the Nar with Cho'Gath being up. Normally, you think being Cho'Gath up, they would still just pick that. I mean, it worked last game until still technically could work. And yeah, you're tricking us, but we all know it's gonna be your got mid. Hey, thanks for the 200 bits, Crisis. I'd I don't think it'll be Scion mid. If it's Scion mid, I will be very um, surprised. I mean, it, it really could. We actually did just see, I think it was Scion mid yesterday uh, yeah, in Worlds. It, here, here, so here's the thing. Lissandra has a very hard time poking out tanks, and she is actually... Oh. Yeah, but I but I know that Zog doesn't play Scion as far as I know, which is the only reason why I was right. going to say that. What happened there? They said it wasn't letting them trade. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it was going to be here, got mid. Well, if everybody's ready, uh, I'm going to be right back and go grab some more drink. So, I'll be right back. Hear me in the distance as my voice disappears in the lead. Right, and we're heading back in. 
Sorry for leaving that overlay up the whole time. I need to get back in the habit of removing that. Did you like hearing me in the distance as it disappeared? No, it made me quite upset. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why is that? Well, I was hoping with you stepping away I wouldn't have to hear you at all, but... Uh, <laughs> too bad. I can't, I can't. I can't? I can't. I can't? Oh, hopefully... These guys can all pick their own champions. That would be good. Figured I'd beat my mic this time while I'm opening up a bag of chips so people like Sean Bear don't yell at me for enjoying my food. Oh. Because the last time when I got food and he was like, can you please make your dining experience less known to all of us? <laughs> well, I mean, I, it was pretty loud you opening your bag of chips. Oh. <laughs> The, the dining part, I don't know about. You guys, you might be muting yourself, but... I always forget that I have a macro for my meat button. I do that for various things happening in the background. Yeah. So yeah, I don't they have did. to alt-tab. They let Nar, Elise, and Liz go through, and the only power pick they got out of it was Urgot. And the sad thing is, Liss is known, or is one of like the the main like neutralizing picks into Urgot right now. So that it's very bizarre to see that. Yeah, I know. I know Zog is good on Urgot, but I feel like it was probably more picked if they actually picked the Cho'Gath. But now that they picked the Nar, it's like. It really doesn't negate much, other than maybe Alistair. Come on, we, we, we all know you're going to pick Alistair. Oh, what could it be? Maybe it's a, a, a poop champion. I'd love to see some Aatrox support. I would not. I don't want to know what that's like, because it's probably garbage. It's probably garbage. <laughs> it's definitely garbage. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, like, if he did it with, like, Yasuo or something, it probably could be good. No, no, don't, <laughs> like, don't would, justify like, this. Like, if you would, like, Tigus early and, like, got the stacks as a melee champion. No. It'd be, it'd be like, uh, Pike. No. Except better, because Pike is garbage. <laughs> Pike is so good. What are you talking about? <laughs> He's either good because he's fed, or he's just garbage because he either went even or. The nice loses. thing about Pike is he has a pers he has a, a true damage execute, right? So he doesn't net technically need too much damage to be good. Whereas Aatrox, like he needs attack damage to scale. There has been tank Aatrox before. Not with the rework. Not that's been successful. That is true, but to be fair, everybody that's played. Tank Aatrox or any Aatrox variant has been pretty bad, regardless of if they're pro or not. Right. So, yeah, Tank Aatrox has not been good since Season 3. I miss Tank Aatrox. Tank Aatrox was so fun but annoying to deal with. It was broken. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. It's like Tank Fizz. Bring Tank Fizz back. Oh, God. Or Tank Echo. Tank Echo or Tank Fizz, then I'll be happy. While we're at I'm it, gonna... let's bring back Tank Akali and 
full yeah, tank that, that talent. Can stay dead. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen. I think I saw Tank Talon once, and that was it. It's really stupid. And then it was like the end of it. Over under. It's a good question. What do you want to do? Mm. For uh, over. First, it, first team the uh, three towers. Sure. You really do that one too often. I don't think we've ever done that one. No, we've done it before. It's just been a while. Oh. I think it was like it was either the first or second week that I started casting. Mm. I think we did it. Yeah, we might have done it once. I don't remember. Did you uh did you buy the new Call of Duty game? I have not, but I am this Friday when I get paid. All right. I've been playing it a good amount. I tried streaming it, but I don't think my computer can handle playing it and streaming it, which thoroughly surprised me. Yeah, I was very surprised too when I found out that supposedly the met, the minimum requirement of RAM is 8 gigs, and I was like, the fuck? What do you mean? That's so many gigs. And Because like, my buddy was telling me he was having an issue of like where he would, like, it was fine running it until like he would start shooting somebody, and then it would drop to like, 20 fps and he has like a 1066 gig so like or like his game is or his game would crash and i was like how are you having issues with the computer that you have and he's <laughs> like yeah the minimum requirement i guess is eight gigs of ram and i was like oh my goodness yeah it's a pretty intensive game so yes i uh, get he's getting more ram this weekend and then i'm also probably gonna get ram along with the game this weekend because i also only have eight gigs mm. I do need RAM. I always did want to get more RAM, but I never, I never thought about getting it because it was never that big of a deal. Because I, I mostly wanted to get more RAM because I got into modding Minecraft. Speaking of Minecraft earlier, so because I wanted to get back into mods, but like some of the mods that I used, like they, they were just like too much to like play and have fun playing. <laughs> Cause there was just so much stuff going on and then on top of that i had like my skin packs so like i had like hd packs going on and mm. like i think crafts alone with the mods that i use i play industrial craft and i have a skin pack uh i think those two alone use like six gigs of ram so my game was just always like yeah it's not optimized at all the mods I mean that. I mean they're optimized. It's just that it just adds so much stuff in the game. It's like any game. It's like Skyrim, or like any game that you mod. All right. Well, we're finally getting into game. Looks oh. like we're gonna see the glacial augment coming out of uh, Scion this game. Yep. Got ourselves the glacial augment Scion. Besides that, runes are pretty standard. Yep, all of those are about what I would expect to see. So here we are, starting up game two. Battlecast with a really, really dominant game one. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, hate to say it, but smash DOV. After about 26 minutes into the game, they just kind of started fighting and then face rolled the rest of the game, so... And I don't know if oh, you noticed, but Zog is using Battlecast Urgot. So he must be a believer in Battlecast uh, making it to semis. Maybe don't true. want to support your enemy but, team while playing them, though. But if you didn't realize, it is now... Um, it's not Battlecast anymore. It's Battle Vex. They officially... Have they officially changed to Battle Vex? They, I noticed their it, Discord I has it been like, changed to Battle Vex. Okay. I, I noticed it like last week, and I was like, "You guys are assholes." <laughs> <laughs> and when I get it, does sound better, especially if they're incorporating both themes. And I was like, "Ah, they literally only did it because they started a meme." Well, and now it's actually a thing. I did. It works. And besides, Battlecast isn't a very sustainable name, anyways. So that is true. I heard so now, ODL has to change their name soon because really, of why? potential legal issues with Riot. Really? Why? What, what is ODL from? Apparently, the project skins are technically called Project Overdrive. Really? Yeah. That's what I've heard. <laughs> I went. That sucks. <laughs> I never would have known that. Yeah. So they're uh, 
from what I heard, they're probably going to be changing their name soon. Like, are they actually getting pretty big? Um, I don't know. Hmm. I don't follow them unless, unless, too much. I was just talking with one of their guys and he mentioned it. Unless it could just be because they want to go long term too, so... Right. I mean, same thing with us and Doki Doki, right? It's okay, Doki Doki. It's a fun meme, meme name. It's not going to last. Doki Doki for life. I forget who brought it up, but somebody brought it up in, uh... Oh, yeah, I think it was Neon that brought it up in general chat, and I was like, I'm so happy I'm not the only one that remembers Doki Doki, and we were like, yeah! I mean, get... half the league remembers it. We, we retained, like, half the players. Oh, I know, but, like, nobody else ever brings it up. <laughs> so, like, when he brought it up, I was like, woo! Don't let it die. Yeah. It would be a sad time. Doodle is taking one hell of a bad trade. Uh, I'm not sure what he's doing right now. Thinking he can trade versus Saiyan. Yeah, not as not as Mega right now. He's gonna well, need a little bit Chugath, more before he can do that. Uh, is definitely more susceptible to trades. At the same time, Saiyan has way more dueling power than Cho'Gath does, at least early, because he has right. the armor. Well, I guess it's probably more the same. It's more or not if Cho'Gath can land his rupture and then get the Whirlpool spikes off after. But Scion has the damage that he has on his Q and along with the armor pen on his E, so. Yeah, well, and Scion actually has a shield to mitigate damage, whereas Cho'Gath has to take a bad trade and then heal up from it later. Yeah. Which I guess could probably really be the only difference between the two champions is the fact that Cho'Gath sustains. And right. Scion mitigates Ch uh, Cho'Gath sustains, so. No, that's another matchup, too, I miss seeing. Cho'Gath Cyan? Cho yeah, the Cho'Gath Cyan or the, uh... What was the other one? It was, like, Cho'Gath Maokai that was, like, the only two champions played top lane for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so you picked Cho'Gath, they picked Maokai, and then it was just a slugfest between those two tanks. Was Cho'Gath Maokai in Galio last season? Basically any Maokai. champion that could run at you with Righteous Glory, but we're going to see a little bit of an engage as they're going pretty aggressive. The Grand Inches does land on, on King the King D. They seem like they want to take this fight. They don't know that Elise is here. They're going to find their way onto Donnie. How do you think she's going to be able to run out of here just fine? Taking a little yeah, bit of damage, but... Fortunately, Sucker being in a pretty good position to not really have to worry about the cocoon there, and they ended up going for Donnie. It was full HP at the start of that, so, I mean, they really weren't going to be able to kill her, and I believe King D's... Uh, bomb thing was on cooldown, so unfortunately, so. not being able to get that on Donnie to possibly kill her afterwards. Yeah, friendly fight over wards, typical support players. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, ward, kill it. I Ooh, can't let him wait, take another this support. Ward. We must fight them. If they take my ward, I lose the game. <laughs> I always love seeing supports that fight over wards. It's so fun sometimes, especially when it's just them, like, there in their own little spot. Right. It's like, the wards in the literal boonies is not seeing anybody, but they still, like, are just having a fight to the death over it. <laughs> it's like, guys, this, hey, is, man, this is possibly 15... the least important war award it's in a, League of Legends history, so... It's a 15 gold advantage I can't let that person have. <laughs> or 30 if it's a pink. That's fair. 15 gold is pretty big for a support. That's about how much they make in a year. <laughs> Only 15 gold a year. Damn, they're pretty poor. <laughs> Which could actually be false in being that supports are one of the more richer roles in the game. What? At least over the past years. No, no, they're all they they've never been richer than any other role. But how do they make money? A lot of minion killing. Supports? <laughs> and assist. Uh, supports <laughs> definitely the lowest income. Always have been. Yeah, Alw always will be. They're going to be under my shadow for the rest of my life. That's okay. I'll remember that for the next time you want a fight started. And I'll let you start the fight and watch you die while I sit there and laugh. Because technically I should have been the one to start it. But I didn't. Not if I'm playing Orn. That is true. Supposed to start all those fights. Zog, though, going for an all-in on the business trooper. Good chunk of damage coming from him there. 
Yeah, this is Trooper stepping a little too close there uh, with uh, Ergot's E being able to get the flip and then pretty much the full rotation off his W, so. Yeah, I'm a little... I, I mentioned it yesterday in the serious tournament talk. I was like, I don't know why Business Trooper isn't playing after Sock Lissandra. This game, very specifically, I'm sad he's not. Because at no point as a Lissandra is he going to walk up and do a super significant amount of damage here into such a tank-heavy comp. And if he went for that Aftershock, he'd be able to do so much disrupting in a fight. It would really help King D start to carry. Um, so, a little sad to see the Comet coming out because it's, yeah. it's not adding anything for him. Yeah, I know, Andy. Being uh, a half support player, at back. least being my second yeah. role. I know the pain. A little bit of a catch out on the Zek, though. Able to get out. Yeah, they got the flash out of him, which is pretty good. It's kind of a slow game again coming out from Battlecast. See yeah. if it explodes at the same kind of time frame that last game did. Yeah, cause, which seems kind of interesting because they almost they either practice a lot from Rockport or they did just change over their style and start learning how to farm. Because, like you were saying, being pretty much all season last se or this season, it was basically just constant fighting all over the place. There really was no slow play, slow play to be had. Yeah, Donnie's gonna be going for an aggressive trade here. The explosive charge they were doing a lot of damage. He wasn't able to find anything with that quickness. Just taking a lot of damage. A doodle in a little bit of spot. Yeah, the nice thing about Battlecast comp this time is they do have the Nar, who's going to be that big split push threat into such a tank heavy comp. They really have opportunities to maybe get something done in the late game through split pushing. And doodle already taking big control over this top lane. Yeah. That was a interesting teleport too. I'm not oh, sure. he got the hop over the Destiny Smash. All he needs is one more oh, auto attack, no, but he hit he a minion. No, Doodle. He misclicked the minion, which, to be fair, is kind of expected. Being Cyan Alt is retarded, and you don't always understand where his character is once he ults. Yeah, but that's... very unfortunate. Yeah, but even if he did auto, he still would have had to get the proc off. So right, it, it would have out. let him flash in for the next one. And since Sion yeah. was ulting, Sion wouldn't have been able to flash away, and he would have definitely gotten that. So that's a bit of a shame. That could have been a pretty good solo kill for him. And that's why you should always key bind only target champions. This is like a mouse button or something. And when you're in a situation like that where you don't want to auto attack a minion, you just hold it down. Yeah. Just make it a toggle. Or you could just A click and be smart that way too. Um Depends on what which A click you have set up. There's A click that'll focus minions. I'm pretty sure you have to choose champion yeah, only uh, A click. But they're gonna I go on to business trooper is. trying to burn him down low. The ult's already been cast, that's gonna heal him up. In no threat of getting pulled in by that fear beyond death. Yeah, I just use whatever the default one is on A. So, I know there is others, but... Yeah, Soccer though, does get hit by the Cocoon. A lot of trouble. Featherstorm is going to be coming out as Faithful Fox misses the head, but Pulverize. Yeah, that's Flash to get out. So, or wait, no. He no, didn't flash. He, he, he headbutted. Flash. Uh, Faithful oh, Fox flashed and headbutted Soccer. I was confused there. I didn't actually see him flash, and then I just saw Soccer in the other direction. Yeah, Faithful though does find his way onto the Rakan, but here comes Zack with the grand entries going a little bit wider. Really nice quickness into the Let's Bounce. Aye. They're getting so much damage off. This should be a couple of Donnie's kills headed so over, but Donnie's well. getting low. King D's just going to go down first blood over to Soccer. Now Faithful trying to run away, but that's going to be a double kill for the Zaya. Yeah, and that's really good to finally get some kills on the Zaya, putting him ahead in the Tristana matchup, because Tristana can be kind of scary once she gets her items, but now Zaya's pretty even with what he has. Hopefully we see him get the boots. Looks like they're going for Dragon 2 after this, with Nar actually also going for the yeah, kill. Yeah, Nar's Bro. looking for the kill on the curl. He needs to flash in, and the boom ran into the solo kill for Doodle in the top side. Farm, 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 farm. Aw, oh, he's dead. <laughs> it's like the one thing I love about Cyan after death. I'm like, yay, a free gold just out of all the means. <laughs> they should make a... Um... Just a Scion Fight Club game mode where it's just a ton of dead Scions running around slapping each other. 
That would be kind of funny. Or like a box, boxer scion skin. <laughs> so like, like he's still dead, but then like when he spot, like when he respawns, he turns into a boxer. That'd be really kind of funny. Yeah, I think this is. I think this is why they wanted to prioritize that Nar pick for Doodle rather than prioritizing a King D pick because it did get taken away from the last game and they know that Doodle can control the lane with it. Uh, as I know you've said it multiple times, Doodle's pretty much the only Nar you've seen in the league that actually plays it correctly in lane with hard punishing the enemy. Uh, yeah. You know, constantly putting up that pressure. The only problem is he's not drawn enough aggro to let the other side of the map start winning. So he's got to either start crushing his lane or drawing aggro up here. Which, by all rights, he technically is. But I feel like, especially being Cyan, I think DOV are mostly okay with just letting him lose. Because Cyan's still going to be useful regardless of if he really loses. Unless he's actually just, like, really far behind to the point where he's no longer useful. But yeah, now he's, actually he's in a little bit of here. trouble. It's a cocoon actually lands onto Rusty Squeezebox. They're going to try and put oh him into goodness. the cell division. Doodle's still going for it as well. Wait. If he can get the kill. And now Business Trooper just oh, completely yellow. dodges away from Zog. And they're just going to start trying to kill him. Zog's walking around the corner wants to try and find something. But there goes the Zack. He's dead. Um, it's interesting. He chose to go over to River instead of going to the Scion, who maybe could have helped him, but maybe he was just more afraid of possibly giving over both kills. Yeah. So, I guess either way. Hard to say. Zog, though, one. is going to get rooted up, and the ult's coming through. A little bit of a mistimed chain of their CC, and they're going to be running forward. Bubble Boy, though, going to try and get the smite off, see if they can finish it off. He needs to be careful because here comes the Scion ult, the unstoppable onslaught. Going to go a little bit wide. I got kind of surprised I didn't see Zog try to go for the Q turn into the alt because if he landed that Q, I'm pretty sure that would have been enough damage after all to kill. But I think the only problem is with how low he got. Casting both those spells would have slowed him down long enough for them to land more onto him, and I think they probably would have just killed him. But he was in spider form, so I mean, his spider form range is pretty short. Right, but like Liss wasn't in range. So casting two spells there, and then like the the ult takes time to actually kill them, so it would have let Enlist catch up and be able to finish off that. But this is definitely gonna be a pretty interesting game right now. Soccer, the only one on Dov that feels like they're really having a good game. Zog's actually doing pretty decent as well. Yeah, he hasn't died and he hasn't really fallen too far behind, so he's just not able to capitalize on being able to finish any of the Lissandra kills. Yeah, the Zonyas has come out. I think this could still be a Zog kill, and it nice. is gonna be the solo kill for Zog. Onto Lissandra. Yeah, unfortunately, Stopwatch not staying frozen long enough for the ult to expire so yeah it only lasts for two and a half seconds whereas the fear beyond death lasts quite a bit longer than that faithful fox gives vision of the blast cone letting her repel over but now zog's walking down possibly just trying to get some good pressure down here yeah i can assume there's gonna be a fight over the next dragon being that it is infernal dov have picked up the first one they could definitely look for the second one, which both dragons together are very good, especially for the team that they have. Having three three technically tanks, one off tank. Yeah, Doodles. Trying to find his way onto Crow, just gonna force him out of lane. Yeah, they will definitely have to start doing something about Nara though, because especially if he starts getting the black cleaver and building the way he should, he's gonna turn into a problem. Yeah, I mean, he's already 30 CS up right now, looking to kind of expand that lead. You're going to see a little bit of a fight coming bot as both junglers are heading down. Don is going to get engaged on first as Crow's actually is... looking for... I'm not sure what happened to Crow, but he's going to be dead now. Bubble Boy dove a little bit too deep. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what happened there. Also, not really quite sure what he's trying to go for either, because he went for Bammies, which is understandable, but then he went... Merc treads into what looks like maybe an Abyssal Mask. So that's kind of... I'm not sure what he's trying to go for there. Yeah, I think the Bammy's for the wave clear, and then... Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, the, I mean, there is a lot of magic damage as well. Most of Nar's damage right now is magic. Um, Bubble Boy and Business... Uh, 
yeah, hyper proc is magic, and that's where the big chunks come from. Hmm. So it's not like the only thing that you should be going against Nar, but in the early game it can yeah. be beneficial to actually build that. So Doodle's actually just kind of straight up jump <laughs> into the ult. <laughs> kind of expected Crow to be angling it a little bit better. I was yeah, gonna he be probably forced didn't to run. expect it to be like right there. He right. thought it was going to be down the lane. Yeah, Crow was... Like possibly down here. Possibly, he but now with Doodle being ulti. mega... Might be able to turn around. He does have ulti, but he decided to go that way instead of throwing him away. But I guess either way, he will still get out. Yeah. You know, it's kind of interesting because he could have still had a chance to land his Q. But I guess Nar having to hop, he was still pretty confident in getting out. So. I feel like with Nar being this low, uh, I guess they're already on the Infernal. Looks like battle cast, battle vex. Yeah, dude, goes in a lot of trouble. He's just gonna get caught up and killed by the Zach. Shut down gold there. They could potentially look to force down this tower if Zach stays here. Yeah, especially with DOV being as pushed up as they are, at least is looking bot lane, so she could actually just have a free gank should he decide to come down. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna be trying to do it onto Zog though. As now Business Trooper with the re-engage gets the ult off. Gonna try and couple up all this CC. Lots of damage coming through, and I don't think Zog can make it out of this one. They're gonna get the kill there. If there's a trooper in the lead, but first tower is gonna be dropping in the top side. I do believe Cyan got the solo gold. No, it split. Okay. They both had a 325 gold drop on them. All right. Well, he finished the Sunfire. Yeah, he did end up going for the Sunfire, uh, and then he went for... Glacial Shroud. Yeah, Looks like he's... Glacial. That's... Okay, that second uh, Sapphire Crystal is definitely a mistake. Not like a mistake, as in he didn't mean to do that, but that is not what he should be doing. It looks like he's trying to go for an Ice Warren Gauntlet, which yeah. is completely the wrong choice here. You definitely and want to go for um, a Frozen Heart. Red team's turn has been destroyed. Oh, I'll be right back. Hold on a second. But DOV do find themselves bot lane tower as Battlecast took a pretty bad recall, to be honest. Faithful. Maybe going up for a ward that he shouldn't be. Gets hit by a lot of crowd control. There is no way out for him. And DOV are setting up these traps pretty darn well. Now Crow's trying to find his way onto King D. But it looks like Battlecast still want to take this, knowing that they're 2v3. Doodle's finally going to get topside, start trying to even up this gold discrepancy. Baron has spawned, neither team went for the Rift Herald. And it's starting to look pretty good for DOV right now. They've had to hit a really good tanky point. And since Battlecast didn't explode in the early game, it's really going to let DOV take some fights and get a good amount of damage off. And it's going to be a lot on Doodle and the split push. Welcome back, sir. Food got here. I ordered food, so... Food! Yep. Hey, thanks for the 300 bits, Hot Squirtle. Definitely appreciate hey. it. Wow, we're moving up in the world. People and, are actually uh, starting to donate more. People are giving me money. Woo! Yeah. Twitch finally, like, paid me yesterday for the beginning of the, the split, but there is going to be a little bit of a fight starting out. Lots being used as Doodle with a huge Ooh, nice. Gnar. Going to be knocking everyone back, but this is not a team fight. Gnar, he's trying to run, but he gets hit by the Fear Beyond Death. He's going to get pulled back in. The kill for Zog. They're going to chase forward, trying to find the kill onto Faithful Fox as well. And King D going to be forced to jump out of there, but Business Trooper has found his way into the pit as well. Nice slow field from his ult. Getting a lot of work done with Bubble Boy in the fight. They might be able to turn this one around. They've gotten just as many kills as DOV did. And a little bit more map control means they could push up onto this tower. 
Yeah, it was a good start there. I didn't even realize Buff Battlevex actually was, like, not even there at the start of that fight. I'm not sure, like, what happened, but somehow DOV was really able to jump on their whole team. But not Bubble, what are you doing? You're alone. Yeah, it might just be a bait, though, because Business Trooper has found his way in. King D with the first kill. Going to be able to get a reset. No, Zach in the yeah, passive. He's, he's got to go forward now. on to Donnie. Now he needs to be a little bit careful because Soccer and Zach are still here. The elastic slingshot not going to land, but the slow is going to be enough from the Q. The shutdown kill, though, traded both ways. But I think it still benefits for Sana. And so. it just Good. keeps going. Zog is here with the double TP in, trying to find his way with the Righteous Glory. Zog, stop and him! I think... Oh, no! The Disdain lands! And I don't think that he's going to be able to get out of there. Lissandra <laughs> does go down. That's always, like, one of the most painful moments when, like, both of you are slow champions and you're trying to get the bias count, but the one <laughs> person just flips you back and you're like, no! Yeah. It was a very long, drawn-out scenario there. Doodle, though, is bot side, so he's going to be able to get the third tower for them. It's fairly low. No one's going to be able to stop this, but... Okay, maybe if he stops tanking the tower. <laughs> but do you yeah, at least like, have a little bit of a better plan? Looks like Crow is going for the Righteous instead of Iceborne. Might possibly just be getting that extra mana crystal to have extra mana. Possibly Just maybe going a, for Abyssal later. Yeah, but. still a like waste of 350 gold. You don't need to sit on that, right? Like, Scion does yeah. not have mana problems at this point in the game. Um, if you're playing him well, right? And mm -hmm. it's like landing your abilities and not just throwing them out on cooldown. Um, so he could be a lot farther in his build at the moment. Yeah. Because that's basically two waves right there, right? That's just sitting in his pocket. So he's going to have to wait an extra two waves to even get to his Righteous Glory. And that kind of timing could be really big. Oh, yeah. First three towers to the battle cast, by the way. Cool. I forgot we even had that bet, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, who voted? One person voted? <laughs> yeah, you guys are but... complaining about first three towers, and nobody even bets anymore. So, like... Come on now. Hmm. What was that? Like all the last two weeks, I was like the only person that ever bet on anything. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Dragon, though, should be going over to DOV. Battlecast don't feel the need to really fight over it just being an Ocean Drake. Yeah, but it is still their second dragon, so I'm kind of surprised they didn't at least try to contest a little bit. But I guess being the three tanks that they are, yeah, I think they, they know that their comp way. isn't going to be Ooh, that nice. great at that. King D, though, gets pulled in, goes down immediately, as there's just too much CC there. I will say, though, out of the ults that Rusty has been able to land, his ultis are pretty good. Yeah, I mean, he's finding a lot of really good jumps and ults and stuff. He's been doing work, definitely. Having a much better game than he did last time. One thing I'm going to be interested to see. Um, there is a mechanic between Elise and Zack. Where Zack's Q can work off of Elise's minions. So whenever he's like 1v1 in Elise, he can actually just combo his Q onto Elise's spiders. Oh, yeah. And we'll have to see if he well, ever does it. It is still technically it. a targetable thing, so it's right. really anything targetable. The only targetable thing that I know of that it doesn't work on is Yorick Wall. Does it really count as... Well, I guess that's like half targetable. Right, I mean, you, you, you get to auto-attack it, yeah. But DOV is still not able to break through that mid lane. Even gold counts for both teams, essentially. And it's just slow rolling. The big thing here... For Battlecast is trying to get Doodle an advantage, which he does have. They're going to be going on to Crow. So much CC, they just literally can't do anything. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure. I know earlier he all chatted and said, "Oh, you killed me when I accidentally alt tabbed." Um, I don't know if that just happened again or what's going on there, but either way, it's definitely unfortunate. Battlecast get the best of that scenario. They're going to be able to push up on this tower now. I don't know why you would alt-tab in a playoff game, though. Oh, he said so accidentally. Seems... I don't know. It's... Sometimes if you play in full screen and you click near the edge, it'll um, it'll tab you out. I guess. 
Like if you have dual monitors, but yeah, I, I have that issue a lot. That's why I don't play in full screen anymore. One of the reasons. I feel like that's only with certain monitors. So like, even my buddy was having that issue, and like me and him both got the same monitor. But like, I've never had that issue, and I've had dual monitors with the same one that he has. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I've never had that issue. Yeah, it's like I'll I'll have it like in shooters sometimes, but like only after like the first game, and then it'll fix itself. Yeah, because like in shooters, like how you have to like scroll your mouse like so far over, and then it just like clicks off the screen. Right. Yeah, I'm a little but... sad that Battlecast, after getting that pick, for some reason decided to roam everybody down there. Crow is going for a little bit of a gauge, but roaming everybody down there after getting that pick, like this Nar is built for split pushing, and they literally just brought the entire DOV team over to him, which meant even though they got the kill, they literally gained no map pressure off it because of how they played it, but Sign with a really yeah, quick no, engage, Cyan and here comes three. the Recon as well. They're trying to run out of here. Zach with the less bounce onto Faithful Fox, but I think the rest of the fight is what we really want to look at. Doodle finally going mega, uses the Nar to push them under the tower, but a double kill for Zog, and Bubble oh. Boy gets hit with a knockup as well. I can't believe that oh. landed. He's going to get chased He's down. Missed. He's maybe able to get out of here, but now Lissandra is here as well. He's going to go down in Faithful under the tower. They just cannot get anything done. Battlecast are getting out. Team fought right now. I'm more surprised that the uh, Urgot E missed after that. Like, he barely was able to flash out of range there to be able to get out, but did still survive, but they do still get the tier 2. And it looks like they're probably just going to go Ward Dragon, which not sure when it's up next. There is no Dragon timer, unfortunately. So. Yeah, it won't come up for a little bit longer, which means it'll probably be another three minutes. Oh, there it is. Two minutes. Just came back. Well, see, Andy, they landed that knockup because three of them decided to group up on top of each other. So being the big range or the big AOE range that his ulti has, when he hit the one person, it hit all three. Uh, it's a little, um, yeah, I don't know. Battlecasts are not doing their lane allocations correctly right now. Oh, they... the one on bubble, the one on bubble because his Q is like, it's it's like a lot of spells like where the max range is like just slightly out of the actual range that it shows. Right. So, and he pretty much had it across the whole lane, so well, like, he wasn't getting out of it. And spectator is glitchy so it's possible that he was actually underneath it but i don't know but yeah battlecast have not been doing their lane allocations correctly they need to get doodle off in a side lane and have coverage for him so that he doesn't get collapsed on and nothing happens but they can't keep bringing doodle in for a team fight when he's sitting on a blade of the rune king and half the components for frozen mallet right well, like, see, it's it's okay to have, have him in a team fight but what the, the problem is that i've been noticing is that they have him split but then people go to stop him from splitting, but then they send all of battle effects to, like, stop them from going down to stop him from splitting instead of just pushing a lane. It's like, let them I mean, just I... kill Doodle and I... then just get a tower or something. I guess, but I mean, right there, they had Lissandra off in the side lane and Doodle grouped up, right? It's like, why would you have your team fight mage split pushing and your split push character in set up for, like, a team fight area, right? Like, they need to yeah. get Doodle off in his side lane, preferably bot lane. That way they can draw, you know, attention down there. And then they can look for maybe going towards a Baron if people go to collapse on him. Or, uh, you know, they can cover him or they can get mid. There's a lot of options here, but they just need to start allocating their resources properly. And DOV can yeah. keep doing what they're doing right now. They need to maybe send one person to cover, but the rest of them can just run down mid, try and find picks with the Zac and the Urgot, and just call it good. You know, a lot of picks that they are getting too, you know, they are getting back into objectives. So, like, the last team fight they got, they got mid tower. The team fight after that, they got the second mid tower. Now they're getting Drake and pretty much for free. So, we'll have to see what they do next year if they're able to start getting Baron control of this. Battle Vex heads over there in a super insane fest. Yeah, doodles. Battle pathing very bizarre he's gonna go down soccer is godlike as zach's gonna try and find his way in with the elastic Ooh, shot Sion nice bought into the back side it didn't get the knockup but it doesn't matter because there goes king d the fear beyond death he's falling down they're gonna chase for it onto faithful fox i don't think his unbreakable will is gonna mean drag crap and he's gonna fall down that's gonna be three members dead and a baron on deck for dov
That was a really nice sign out in the back line. They were both like moving up to kind of help out Bubble Boy from being caught there, and then just ended up walking right into the sign out that was coming from Deep Pit. So like you just nailed both Alistair and Tristana, which I was kind of more surprised it still hit her. But yeah, the explosion damage radius goes a lot farther than the actual knockup does. Yeah. And so getting that full range, that pretty much half of the Tristana with just the ult being level 3 now. I think it was level 3 before that started. I could be wrong. But that is DOV with a pretty sizable lead now. 4,000 gold. Now with the Baron as well. Hey, thanks for the follow, Baron's Jew. Um, and they look like they could possibly try and close this out. Yeah, they're pretty much at the point where they can. They just need to stay grouped and... Look for what they need to be able to do. They can't have anybody really split other than Scion. And you don't really want to do anything too crazy. So hopefully people will just actually stay together and not be totally split. But... Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just very difficult. Because oh, Battle... No. Oh, is Elise going to be fine? Here comes the Elastic Clean Shot from Zach. It's going to land. He's going to flash forward. Didn't what? quite get the knockup. And I think he's going to be able to get out. No, the Grand Engine is going to land with the charm as well. Now, Doodle's in a little bit of trouble, but Zach undershoots it. Yeah, I think at this point, they're just kind of pressuring the bot wave. Uh, being that there is a pretty massive bot wave coming in with uh, Curl here. It can pretty much just look the brute force to tower down. Yeah, and Zog's gonna be running in with that righteous glory, just threatening them. What's even more surprising too is like, other than the Merc, tre Merc treads and just recently getting the hex drinker, he has not had any MR at all for this Lissandra whole game. It's just been all armor. Yeah, really he's nice. Got Zach a lot of uh, shields though, but Zog in the backside. They've already burned down the tower. Zed Nar is gonna get pulled in. Doodle can't do anything there. King D is trying to get this fight off, but there's just too much CC. He doesn't have enough mobility. No way out. There goes the kill. Faithful Fox gonna be the next on deck. And with the Baron, DOV should be able to push up and try and close this out. It's going to be a lot on Bubble Boy, but I don't think Annalise is made for killing all these tanks. He's going to be dropping down in a lot damage. of trouble, though. Does he do enough damage to burn through five tanks? Yes. He does Even though there's only three tanks. But yeah, that is going to be DOV taking game at two, getting the turnaround. Find themselves a good draft there. Yeah, and like we were saying before, Scion, while pretty much still being destroyed early, uh, with Nar being the champion that he is, he's still going to be way more useful than what Nar is going to be. So he can fall behind all he wants, but there's just too much utility on Scion as a champion to really kind of count him out entirely. Especially with the way that Battlecast was playing, right? Like they weren't warding like ever whenever Nar would push up neither top yeah. nor bot side was warded it's like well you can't do this now right and then their picks as well made it very difficult to actually defend in a four versus five situation because you can definitely manage that with some comps where you can have a nar split pushing <clears> and then the rest is just um you know holding their own but yeah uh definitely we're not built for that what are you thinking about mvps um if i can talk uh mvp one sec. All right, I can breathe. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> probably Rusty, even though he doesn't have like the highest score line out of all of them. I feel a lot of his engages were really what were able to start a lot of those fights, and then the few alts that he did get off, he brought in like Tristana one time. He brought in Battle Business Trooper one time. I mean, he was just bringing in pretty much anybody that they could kill and then they were getting objectives off of it and i thought he did really well throughout the whole game yeah i could agree there he was definitely finding <clears> all <throat> the engages that they needed it was a it was a pretty good joint team effort and i think zog and soccer played really out of their mind but i mean rusty got that uh bot lane gank off which started the bot lane snowball just all over the map did a lot more than bubble boy did this game so yeah i, yeah. I would agree i think rusty was a pretty solid choice I, I swallowed a, a chip wrong and it was stuck in my throat and oh that's the worst and, and then like couldn't talk <laughs> luckily i still had a small amount of diet coke left diet coke Ugh. yeah i don't have regular i can't have regular coke unfortunately 
Unfortunately, regular regular Coke for me anyway is too strong on my mouth mm. and burns the crap out of my mouth. It's a shame. Yeah, which is sad because it was really only within like the last couple years it really started doing that because it used to be fine. I think it was because like for almost an entire year I was on like a no like a no uh, sugar or carbs diet and then I would do like a low carb high fat diet and because I didn't have like any soda in that time I think my body just got used to not having coke and then when I went back to coke it was like ew no don't drink me I'll be right back Diet Coke is good, though. I like Diet Coke. It's probably, like, one of the few diets that I can actually have that actually still tastes good. Diet Mountain Dew, yeah. It tastes, like, too weird. I don't know, like, what it is about it, but it has, like, a weird aftertaste to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 